Hello, chosen, holy, and dearly loved online family. Would you please watch this four minute video from our Hmong friends in Thailand, Laos, and Vietnam. Greetings to you in the name of our Lord Christ Jesus. I would like to share with you a very special need of the Hmong pastors in Laos and Vietnam. Many of our Hmong pastors have to travel long distances to share the Word of God to the people. Traveling in Laos and in Vietnam is not easy because the Hmong people live mostly in remote areas on the mountains far from modern facilities and roads. So walking and riding on motorbikes are often how they got to the people. Walking only possible if they needed to travel only a few miles. However, with 10 to 100 miles or plus, they have to travel by motorbikes. This is how our Hmong brothers in Vietnam travel. They don't have a big vehicles, so mostly they use the motorbike for all kinds of transportations. Many of our Hmong pastors in Laos and Vietnam do not have motorbikes to help them travel to witness the gospel. Therefore, we are asking you to prayerfully give financial support for the purchasing of six motorbikes for six Hmong pastors in Laos and Vietnam. Each motorbike costs only about $1,500. You can support the Hmong pastor's need for motorbikes with your prayers and financial giving. You can also share the need with your family members, friends, and church members. In the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 15, the Word of God says, How can anyone preach unless they are sent? In application, how can the Hmong pastors preach unless they get to the Hmong people? This means they need motorbikes to help them to get to the people so they can preach the word of God. Here is what happened when the Hmong pastors got to the people and shared the word of God. Just in July alone, 52 individuals were baptized. Over 150 people received teachings on the Word of God. Working together with the Hmong pastors in Laos and Vietnam, we are praying that the Lord will lead us to start 10 new ministries or congregations within this new fiscal year of 2020 and 2021. Therefore, we are inviting you to partner with us to help send the Hmong pastors to the Hmong people in Laos and Vietnam by providing them the motorbikes that they needed. Thank you for your prayers and your financial support of the Lord's work through our family among the Hmong people in Southeast Asia. God bless you.
So what an amazing four-minute video from our friend, the Reverend Dr. Feng Chitu Lo, our missionary in uh, Thailand, serving into Laos, serving into Vietnam. Gospel motorbikes, we know the story. Again, one of those pictures we had shown over a year ago when we raised here at New Hope, just in our uh, church alone, uh, all the money for the first round of gospel motorbikes. And now there's another round of gospel motorbikes for some more Hmong uh, friends in Vietnam and a few more in Laos as the, the mission continues to multiply. God's kingdom is ever warmly expanding in us and through us and all around us and way beyond us. So uh, notice all the baptisms. Uh, again, all the different ways. Just the water, just the, the water. In the name of the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So some of them were immersed, some of them sprinkled, some little babies, uh, uh, adults. Just all, that, all the teaching that's going on, the gospel teaching that's going on. And so behind every set of eyes that we look into, no matter the color of their skin, no matter what language, there's a soul that matters to God. So again, if you want to support this ministry, you can go online and uh, make a donation. Uh, as, as it said there at, here at New Hope, you can mail in a check and just put in uh, Thailand or Hmong. Uh, we'll, we'll know what it's, it's for. Gospel motorbikes as the kingdom of God is ever warmly expanding. Let's take a moment of, uh, to pray and we'll get into our worship music to, today. Lord Jesus. The wonder of your gospel going around the world, some of it happening starting here and going over to our friends in Thailand and Vietnam and Laos. Thank you that we can support this work to some of the poorest of the poor in this world. And so Jesus, we know that those souls matter for life everlasting. So help us to support that. We're so thankful that you love us. We're so thankful that you love them. So as we open up our worship singing today. Help us to sing to you a love so great, a love so great. Be with us, Jesus, as you always are. We ask it in your name. Amen.
outshining all the stars in glory. Your love is like the wildest ocean. Oh, nothing else compares. There's a grace when the heart is on to fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire standing next to me there was another in the waters holding back the seas and should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free there is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me there is another in the fire All my dead left for dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore Should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I will bow to the things of this world. And I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in There's a grave that holds nobody, and now that power lives in me. There is another in the fire. And 
So here we go. We're going to begin a brand new message series, number of weeks as we uh, do, do this. We're going to be thinking about hands, especially the perfectly nailed, scarred hands of Jesus. But before we get to that, today I just want us to be thinking about that all hands have stories. Your hands have stories. My hands have stories. All the stories that we know have hands in the stories in one way or another. So today, as we um, are thinking about this, uh, all hands of stories, I want us to go back 30 years. In 1990, what were your hands doing? What were the stories of your hands in 1990? Some of you may have not been born yet, but there were people that had hands that were born that you would be born to, and a part of their hand stories is giving birth to you and taking care of you. For those of us who are old enough to remember back 30 years ago, one of the stories that appeared, that occurred to me as I was thinking about this back in 1990, we're, at, we're here in Nina, we were still a mile away over on the Cold Spring uh, site, and during the summer of, I believe it was probably 1990, um, we had a vacation Bible school in that small little church. There were just maybe 40, 50 people, and maybe we recruited some number of children in that, and there were maybe 40, 50 children that came for that vacation Bible school. And our daughter, Sarah, was just a little over two years old at that time, and we had this little playpen, and we put it in my office, and it was a very, very small office, not much bigger than a closet. And so the playpen was right there, and she was sleeping in it, or supposed to be sleeping in it, but at some point she awoke, and again, lots of activities going on in the little building and outside, and then uh, there was a little desk there right next to it, because again, the office was very small, and she opened up the bottom drawer of the desk where there was like a uh, file folders, and she took her little hands, her cute little hands, and started helping herself to the files that were in there. And so when we came in to check on her, well, she had been busy, let's say, and it took my hands lots of minutes to get everything back together and to put it uh, back into its proper place. So hand stories. I want us to think about um, our hand stories from 1990 all the way to this year and all oh, the stories of our hands this year. Uh, we're taking our hands over and over again and putting on masks, putting on masks, putting on masks. There are hands that are hand-making masks. There are hands that are operating machines that are making masks by the millions. There's just so many. There's hands working every day, every day, every day trying to come up with a vaccine. There's hands that have been busy, our nurses' hands, the, the doctor's hands, all those medical hands trying to help people that do test positive with COVID-19 if they end up having to go into the hospital. So the stories of hands, hands, and all kinds of other stories to us are hands, our hands, our hands. But I want to give us a vision, and I want us to think about where our hands are going to be and what are the stories of our hands going to be in 2050, 30 years from now. So all of us, um, if we would add 30 years to our age, and what will the stories of our hands be? I, I would be in my 90s, and will the stories of my hands be still? What will the stories of your hands be? So all hands have stories. So as we think about the stories of hands, I want us to think about the never a day without, never a day without, that's just going to be the title of this message series, but never a day without, and our focus is going to be, our focus is going to be the Jesus's perfectly nail-scarred hands. His perfectly nail-scarred hands. I want us to have a vision of this. 
There's a picture that is being displayed in our worship center in the entryway as you come into the church that our resident artist did for us, Carrie Jankowski. Never a day without the perfectly nail-scarred hand of Jesus. Just look at that hand. And visualize that hand for you. That hand serves the story of our hands. All the stories of all the hands that have ever existed, this perfectly nail-scarred hand of Jesus serves us. And so we get this idea of Jesus' perfectly nail-scarred hands from the <clears throat> Gospel of John. Here's what we read after one of the, in one of the resurrection appearances of Jesus after his resurrection. We read this, that now Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, one of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came one of those first times. So the other disciples told him when they were together again, Thomas, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples, the disciples of Jesus, were in the house again. And this time Thomas was with them. And though the doors were locked, though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Oh, with his wonderful resurrected breath, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Thomas gets to see the perfectly Nail scarred hands of Jesus. Question. From that day forward, would Thomas ever miss a day without a vision of Jesus' perfectly nail scarred hands? So, again, as we look at this perfectly nail scarred hand of Jesus, never a day, never a day. 1990, since then, never a day. 2020, never a day. 30 years from now, never a day, never a day, never a day without Jesus. His perfectly nail-scarred hands. Before his hands were perfectly nail-scarred hands, oh, do we know the wonder of his hands. Here's a few very, very brief stories of the hands of Jesus as he walked before he went to the cross. In Mark chapter 1, we read he, uh, Peter's mother-in-law is sick and she has a fever. And so we read in Mark chapter 1, so Jesus went to her, took her hand and helped her up and the fever left her and she began to wait on them. A few verses later, it says a man with leprosy came to Jesus and begged him on his knees, if you're willing, you can make me clean and filled with compassion. Jesus reached out his hand, reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. Oh, the hands of Jesus. One more. Mark chapter 5, this little 12-year-old girl dies. And her hands are empty. And they're lifeless. And then we re read that Jesus took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. And this is all before the perfectly nail-scarred hands of Jesus after the cross, after the resurrection. All the wonder of those hands. And now, but now, we know the hands after the cross, never a day without Jesus. So again, just for a moment, think about the hands and how the hands of Jesus serve us. So over the, these weeks, as we're going to be looking at that 
perfectly nail scarred hands of Jesus and the story of the other hands that are going to be depicted for us. I just want us to keep having this vision, never a day, never a day, never a day without. And the one that we want to focus on most is just that perfectly nail scarred hands of Jesus. And we get that from, we're going to, uh, one of the key verses that we're going to be looking at is from Hebrews chapter 12, where we, we read, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, who's the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. Again, his hands nailed to the cross, his feet nailed to the cross. We're going to be thinking about his nailed hands, his perfectly nail-scarred hands. And he's scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And consider him, consider him, consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, all of us with unclean hands, sinful hands, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. We're trying hard to not grow weary and lose heart, especially in these days as 2020 has come so, so long. And so we want to ask this question about, so what about our hands? What about our hands? What are the stories of our hands? Well, part of the stories of our hands is that there is never a day without us taking, taking. Would you? Just for a moment with one hand or maybe both hands, just kind of clench them like you're taking, like you're reaching out and you're going to take hold of an apple. You're going to take hold of a sandwich. You're going to take hold of a cup of coffee. You're going to take hold of something. You're, you're taking, you're, you're taking. We ask this question, you know, um, what about our hands? What about our hands? We ask, um, well, how, how, how clean are our hands? Again, in this uh, long, long season of COVID-19, how long are we supposed to wash our hands for when we wash them? 21 seconds, isn't that right? 21 seconds. Are you doing that faithfully? 21 seconds, washing your hands, washing your hands, trying to get them clean. And, and what's the hope? Why do we want to wash our hands for that, those, that, that, that length of time? Uh, again, that we would hopefully never get COVID-19. We won't test positive that we won't get COVID-19. Because if you get it, we, we know and it's, we, we, we could die. So we don't want to die. And so we want to wash our hands. But let's ask a question that is kind of a troubling question. Can washing our hands clean really stop death? Maybe we can stop and we will prevent from getting COVID-19. But we know there's a false hope if we think that somehow we can always just wash our hands and death will never come. And so there's something about our hands that our hands are not clean. We have unclean hands. We have taking hands. In the weeks to come, in the weeks to come, we're going to see how it is that our hands are, they're filthy because of our taking. They're filthy because of this thing that is called sin. We, we never have a day when we're not taking something that we're, and it's just not just with our hands. Sometimes we're taking things with our minds. So we have thoughts, especially when we take and we judge other people. We judge people for that they're not wearing masks. We judge people for wearing masks. We judge people that they are Democrat. We judge people that they're Republican. We judge people that are different color skins from us. We judge people that are different economically uh, from us. We, we, we judge, we're, we're, we, we do a lot of taking. Another thing in the weeks to come, as we think about this never a day without taking, we're going to be thinking about how it is that we do a lot of taking with our money. I mean, I know you use your hands to work hard, to earn as much money as you can, and then you take your hands and you spend that money doing things that are good, but there's a lot of taking and sometimes our hands are just kind of left unclean. So we're going to be thinking about that. So never a day without taking. There's just never a day without taking. But then the wonder of the hands, those perfectly nail-scarred hands of Jesus, is that he helps us to have never a day without letting go. Without letting go. 
Again, our letting go hands are going to represent what we would call in church world repenting. That's the Bible word for it, repenting. That we would uh, turn our hands over and let go, uh, not wanting to hang on to whatever it is that we've been taking because we again and again and again, we fix our eyes, we fix our eyes on those perfectly nail-scarred hands of Jesus. In Romans chapter 2, we hear this wonderful verse. Or do you not show contempt for the riches of his kindness, those perfectly nail-scarred hands? There's such kindness there. There's tolerance there. There's patience all the way through 2020. These perfectly nail-scarred hands of Jesus. Kindness, patience, not realizing that it's God's kindness, the perfectly nail-scarred hands of Jesus that lead you towards repentance, that will lead us towards letting go of the things that really are not life, the things that are not going to satisfy, the things that will at times take us away from Jesus instead of allowing our hands to be letting go. And so a in a vision that we want us to have, and never a day, never a day. Here's our next picture of just our open hands, never a day without thanking. So here's Jesus as he opens up our hands, invites us to have our hands open. And when our hands are open, again, I want us to be having this vision, to have this, this image that our open hands for, fit perfectly into the open hands of Jesus's perfectly nail-scarred hands. We're going to practice having our hands open and thanking, open and thanking. And I've been thinking about uh, these, these, the, the idea of these never a day without that perfectly nail-scarred hands of Jesus, never a day without our hands taking, never a day without our hands letting go, hopefully in repenting, letting go um, because of Jesus' perfectly nail-scarred hands, and never a day without our hands open and thanking so that Jesus' hand can fit into our hands and our hands can fit into Jesus' perfectly nail-scarred hands. It's thinking of the old hymn, one of the lines of Rock of Ages is, nothing in my hands I bring, simply to the cross I clang. So let me uh, f f finish this first opening message in this never a day without. I've been thinking about these pictures of these four hands for the last few months. Again, it was way back in July when I asked uh, Carrie to paint these four hands for us. And so I've been thinking a lot and meditating on just the perfectly nail-scarred hands of Jesus. And then uh, that every day because of who we are as people and not just because of all the things that have happened in 2020, but just because of who we are. So way back 30 years ago, 1990, way back before that, all the Bible stories. We're going to see Bible stories from the Old Testament, from the New Testament of hands that just take and take and make lives miserable for themselves and miserable for so many other people. And why it is that we need, why it is that we need, why it is that we need the perfectly nail-scarred hands of Jesus. So again, our vision is, is never a day without imagining, without knowing, without considering, without thinking, without meditating on that perfectly nail-scarred hand of Jesus. When we see the picture and when we don't see the picture, we know it's there. That perfectly nail-scarred hand of Jesus was with us back in 1990. And in the year 2000, and in 2010, and all the years from 2010 until 2020, and the perfectly nail-scarred hand's going to be with us as we go into the rest of the years of the 2020s and into 2030 and into 2040, and if God gives us our hands life into even 2050, but there will never be a moment without the perfectly nail-scarred hands of Jesus. 
but also we'll know that every day, every day, every day that we have the stories in our hands, they'll be taking hands. But because of the perfectly nail-scarred hands, they'll be letting go hands. And because of the perfectly nail-scarred hands of Jesus, they'll be open hands and thanking hands. And so the vision, the vision, the vision, never a day without. Never a day without. But what will move us the most is never a day without the perfectly nail-scarred hands of Jesus that will help our taking unclean, sinful hands to let go and to be open so that that perfectly nail-scarred hand of Jesus and our open, empty hand will be together. Let's pray. Jesus, with your perfectly nail-scarred hands, will you put into my open hands, to our open hands, what is good? And Jesus, with your perfectly nail-scarred hands, will you take out of our hands what is not good for us? Help us, Jesus, to know and to trust and to follow all the stories that will lead our hands to move with your perfectly nail-scarred hands. So, Jesus, we pray this in your name, and we ask you, Jesus, that you would help us. And let's together, let's have our hands open today as we pray together the Lord's Prayer, asking Jesus to put into our hands all the good that he has for us, that he gives to us in the words of the Lord's Prayer. And so with our open hands, we hold them out and we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't. Great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold.
So, New Hope, chosen, holy, and dearly loved. Never a day without, never a day without, never a day without those perfectly nail-scarred hands of Jesus. Never a day without taking, ugh, with, oh, don't like that. But never a day without letting go. Never a day without our hands being open and thanking because, because, because of the perfectly nail-scarred hands of Jesus. That's our lighthouse, and that's who our Jesus is. He is always, always with perfectly nail-scarred hands. Christ in us, the hope of glory.